Hello and welcome back to Patrick Boyle on Finance. So today's video is all about Wirecard, the German payments company that announced that they're filing for insolvency today. We'll learn what Wirecard does and how they became the new Enron. For the last year or so, Dan McCrum at the Financial Times has been reporting that German fintech company Wirecard was faking some of its revenue, and Wirecard has been angrily fighting back, accusing McCrum of conspiring with short sellers to push down its stock. Last week, Wirecard disclosed that some of its cash was missing, and finally this week they admitted that there is a prevailing likelihood that the bank trust account balances, in which the amount of 1.9 billion euros is in, does not exist. So what is Wirecard? It's a firm launched in the late stages of the dot-com boom in 1999 as a payment processor, helping websites to collect credit card payments from their customers. They almost went bust in the early 2000s, and in 2002, Marcus Brown, a former KPMG consultant, took over as the new chief executive. Wirecard went public in 2002 by taking over the listing of a defunct call center group, and that avoided the scrutiny usually applied to an initial public offering. By 2006, they moved into banking, meaning that they could both issue credit cards and handle money on behalf of merchants. This was an unusual hybrid of banking and non-banking businesses, and that made them difficult to compare with their peers and helped them to persuade investors to rely on the company's adjusted versions of financial statements. In the last decade, Wirecard went on a shopping spree, buying up small payments companies across Asia in a series of oddly structured deals. In 2015, the Financial Times newspaper began writing its series of articles raising questions about inconsistencies in the group's accounts. So how did Wirecard go from investor darling to disaster in the span of just one week? Well, the answer is a good old-fashioned accounting scandal, the likes of which we haven't really seen since the days of Enron. For those who don't remember, Enron was a high-flying US energy stock in the late 1990s, before it all came crashing down in a $74 billion accounting scandal that rocked Wall Street. There are a lot of similarities between Enron and Wirecard, and all of the ingredients are there for a classic fraud. So number one, a complex corporate structure and dubious accounting practices. Number two, a charismatic self-dealing financial front man. And number three, constant complaints about predatory short sellers. The basis of the Wirecard fraud was tied to a small Dubai-based third-party acquirer called Al Alam Solutions. Acquirers are the link in the payments chain that collects money from card issuers and deposits it in store owners' accounts. Merchants will usually negotiate directly with the acquirers to process payments on their behalf. For each payment that acquirers help merchants route, they charge a fee. So on paper, Al Alam was one of Wirecard's most valuable assets, processing billions worth of payments across Europe, the Middle East and the United States. Yet when the Financial Times investigated this prized asset, they found an operation with just six or seven full-time employees. When the Financial Times then reached out to the biggest customers of Al Alam, 15 said that they had never heard of Al Alam, and eight of them had actually shuttered their operations a year ago in 2017. To top it all off, neither Visa nor MasterCard even had a relationship with Al Alam. So Wirecard was inflating revenue by reporting false transactions. These false transactions led to commissions that were reported and recognized, but never truly existed, and were deposited in fake offshore bank accounts. Over the course of 10 years, this led to approximately $2.2 billion that was reported, but never actually existed. 
The Financial Times posted story after story containing detailed analysis of Wirecard's financial and accounting inaccuracies. And what happened? Wirecard cried foul. They complained publicly and loudly to anyone who would listen that the FT were conspiring with the evil shorts to bring their stock price down. The amazing thing was that it actually worked. Germany's financial regulatory authority actually filed a complaint against the Financial Times and banned short selling of Wirecard stock. This ban on short selling was the first time that that regulator had ever banned short sales of an individual stock. To quote Matt Levine from Bloomberg, Companies that are not doing fraud when reporters ask if they have faked their revenue usually respond by explaining where their revenue comes from. Companies that are doing fraud when reporters ask if they have faked their revenue call the police to try and get reporters arrested. On screen right now you can see an annotated chart of the Wirecard stock price over the last two years from the Financial Times. In March this year, Wirecard's auditor was unable to conclude the audit. In April, their accounting firm said that they could not verify that arrangements responsible for the lion's share of Wirecard's profits reported from 2016 to 2018 were genuine. On June 18th, Wirecard announced that 1.9 billion euros was missing, and the next day Marcus Brown, the CEO, resigned. On June 22nd, Wirecard announced that the 1.9 billion euros of cash probably does not exist. The next day, Marcus Brown was arrested, and today, Wirecard announced that they would file for insolvency. If you found this video helpful, click on the like button. If you'd like to see more content like this, click on subscribe. See you later.